welcome into this place that we call Virtual Sanctuary. As we gather in this room, we gather in this place, I'm so grateful to have you here. I want to give you a word of encouragement before we get into our study tonight. I want to say to you that God is bigger. Marinate on that for a moment. God is bigger than any circumstance, any situation, or anything you have to endure. Yes, I know it may frustrate you. Yes, I know it may hurt you. Yes, I know you may be in your feelings. I want to challenge you to step out of your feelings and to step into God. He's bigger than anything. When you step into something bigger, everything else becomes smaller. And I want to say this to you, that God is bigger than anything that you are facing. Let it go. You can't move on with your life if you're stuck in what happened back then. Yes, it hurt you, but you got to move ahead with your life. Yes, it disappointed you, but you got to move ahead with your life. Let no circumstance, no situation, no person stop you from going forward. I dare you to put that at the bottom of the screen. Keep on moving. Mm. Yes, it hurt you, but you got to keep on moving. Yes, you were disappointed, but you got to keep on moving. Yes, you want it better, but you got to keep on moving. Never let any circumstances or situation in your life stop you from moving. If you can go back and change it, yes, you will go back and change it. But because you can't change what happened, you can change where you're going. And I want to say to you to keep on moving, that you got to go ahead with your life. What they did to you is over and it's done. But I want you to have enough tenacity, enough gall to get up from there and move ahead. What God has for your life is bigger than what you are wallowing in. It's bigger than where you have got stuck in. I want to scream this from the rooftop huh, that God has something bigger for you. Hmm. I need you to believe that, believer. I need you to believe that tonight, that where you are right now is not the bigger place that God is taking you. And I hear the Lord say, he is setting before you an open door. And catch this, and with that open door comes many adversary. Because you are being attacked. Oh, I feel this, huh? It's a sign that the door is opening up. The door is opening. It's about to stretch wide open that the door is opening up huh? based off the fact that you're under attack. So I want you to square your shoulders this evening and say, God thinks that much about me. Even in setback, God is setting up. Oh, I feel this. Even in the midst, please give me this moment, even in the midst of what may be considered one of your biggest setback in your lives, in your life, God is using that which is a setback as, as a setup huh, to propel you into where you are about to go. And I'm not sure who it is that I'm talking to at this moment, huh, but whatever has appeared to be a setback to you uh, is actually a setup to get you to go to a place uh, that you have never gone unless you experience what was considered the setback. And you got to go ahead, my brother. You got to go ahead, my sister. Don't get stuck and stuck. Uh, let me say that again. Uh, the enemy wants you to stay there and feel depressed and wants you to be frustrated and wants you whining and what happened. Um, but you can't stay there. You got to get up. You got the dust. You got to wipe the dust off of your shoes and go ahead with your life. Um, if it was necessary, God would have not, would, would allow it to happen. Um, if it wasn't necessary, but it was necessary to get you to where you are headed. And I only want to talk tonight to people uh, who are excited about where they're going, uh, not going for themselves, but where they're going for God. That's where we are, about where we are going for God. Mm. Let me come up for air. I'm excited about your future. How dare that devil tell you that it is over. I want to speak life to you. I want to encourage you. I, I want to coach you to get up from where you are. That is not over. Who told you it was over? Who told you that your whole life will be defined by that one moment? It is not. The devil is alive. Lie. That, that moment does not define who you are. That setback does not define who you are. That 
failure does not define who you are. The rejection does not define who you are. You are defined by God. And because you are defined by him, who I feel Jesus are, you not ought not to allow any circumstances or situation to get your focus off of him. Come on, lift your eyes into the hills from where your help is coming. I needed to say that tonight. I, I felt that I needed to say that tonight. Listen, come closer to the screen if you can. That devil is a liar. I want you to hear this. Huh? Listen, stop judging yourself off of what people are saying and get inside the book to see what he is saying. That God has plans for you that even the mind cannot phantom. He said, I have plans for you that have I have not put into uh, the heart, the ears, the eyes of other men because uh, they can't see how big uh, what God is taking you to because if they could have seen it, they would have stopped it but because they can't see it they can't stop it i'm excited about your future because they can't see where you're going so they don't know how to stop it they can't stop where you're going because they can't see it and if the devil knew that where you are now will propel you into something greater he would have never came at you but i sense greatness coming in your life i sense a greater level of blessings coming to your life i sense a greater place of glory that's coming into your life i hear jesus in here i sense sense that God is lifting you up out of the miry clay and is about to establish your going and set you on a place uh, that you have never been before. God is up to something in your life. And, and that's why a sign that God is up to something in your life, things begin to become uncomfortable. Because hmm. whenever God is in it, he always stretches us. Ooh, uh, from center to circumference, he always uh, requires us to grow. And I know in this season of life that you're in, I, I, I'm getting to our study tonight. I just hear God talking. Uh, you are in a misunderstood season. Uh, you misunderstood the season, uh, but you didn't misunderstand God. Mm, I need to say that to you. you the, 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 the devil trying to get you to quit because uh, the, you are in a misunderstood season. Not meaning that you misunderstood the season, but those that are around you don't understand what you are carrying. Ooh, I feel this, Jesus. Those around you don't understand who you, what you are carrying. And, and so when the season is right, oh my God, I'm, I, God is changing seasons. There it is. Huh? So, so, so where you are going, uh, what he's propelling you into uh, will be a season that fits what you are carrying. They can handle what you were carrying uh, because they were out of season. Uh, they can handle what you was carrying uh, because uh, they wanted something that did not fit the season that they were in. Mm. I got to get up out of here and get to our study tonight. I just, I, I can't, who, the Bible says when God speaks, who can but prophesy that, that, that what you are carrying is going to be planted in the right season, that it will produce a harvest in its season. Let me slow down here to, to, to say this to you. Um, I'm so excited about what, what, what is happening in your life. I literally feel this, uh, that, that, that what you have encountered up until this moment, all of it, not some of it, all of it has been necessary to propel you to what God is taking you. This is going to be a springboard. It's almost as if it is a slingshot that the experience pull you back so God can launch you forward. I hope you can receive that. That it wasn't a setback. Oh, I feel this. Hey, God, now, it was a pullback that they pulled back on you. Mm. And God allowed what they tried to pull back on you as an opportunity to launch you. Some of you are about to get launched into some of the greatest part of your destiny that you would have never believed or dreamed in uh, because of what you endured. Uh, God say, now they're ready. Now I have to make sure that they matured and they grow and they, they, they stretch themselves. Huh? And now they're ready to handle what I'm taking them to. Ah, I Help me, God. I know we're supposed to be in Bible study tonight, but I, 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 when God speaks, who can but prophesy that you have been propelled. I just feel you've been propelled into a place that you've never been before. 
Whew. I received that, Lord. I received that. Um, we're, 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 let us pray. <laughs> let us pray. How, how do we move forward? Let us pray. Um, Lord, we thank you for this moment and this hour. Let your word become alive to us. In Jesus' name. Whew. We just got out of our series, Living Under Pressure. There are some things you're going to have to live through, some things you're going to have to live with, and there's some things you got to live under, but you got to keep on living. Tonight, we embark upon a new series. And our series is Cross Barriers. Those of us who bear the cross. We'll be here for a few weeks. Um, I want to start tonight and land the foundation of our new series. Join me, if you will. Um, this pericope is found both in Matthew chapter 16 and Luke chapter 9. We may deal with different aspects, but the core of the message <clears throat> is Luke 9, 23 and Matthew 16 and 24. Um, we are, I guess we can, um, we'll begin with um, Matthew 16 and verse 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. If anyone desires to come after me, let him take up his cross and follow me. For the sake of time, let me jump right into this. Context is everything. In our context tonight, Jesus is having a conversation with the disciples about who he is, about his identity, and about his purpose. And he asked them the probing question, who do men say that I am? And they all had answers. Some say that you're John the Baptist. Some say that you are Jeremiah. Some say that you are Elijah. Some are saying you're one of the prophets. We're not sure who you are. But we know you are operating in the office of a prophet. And Jesus says to them, in turn, they have a limited view of who I am. Because I'm more than a prophet. But they only see me from a limited view. He says, who do you say that I am? And there was silence for a moment. Because everyone else had said that you're one of the prophets. And none of us have seen you differently. And Tyrion, the Lord stepped into the picture and Peter said, I just heard the word. You are the Christ. Jesus says you are answering then what I am. Because they weren't asking for my social security number. They weren't asking for my birth certificate. They weren't asking for my driver license. They knew who my mother is. They knew who has raised me as a father. They knew I had brothers and sisters. So the question wasn't really about who I was. It was about what I am. So he says in this context that now that you know what I've came to do, I don't want you to tell anybody. And in this instance, he begins to talk to them about what's about to happen to him. He begins to forewarn them about his a coming crucifixion, how the priests, the scribes, the Pharisees are about to reject him, about how the three forms of government is about to be against him. And Peter pulled him to the side and said, Lord, be that far away from you. And Jesus responded, get behind me, Satan. For you are an offense to me. You are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. In our series, Cross Bears, our message tonight. Are you ready for this? Our message tonight is demonstration over conversation. It's here in the text I want you to see that Jesus says to them in verse 20 of Matthews, 
verse 16, chapter 16, verse 20. He says, tell nobody on what I am that's been the Christ, the anointed one. He says in verse 24, to all his disciples, after he says, don't tell anybody, he says to all of them, if anyone desires, I'm confused, Lord, I, there's tension here in the text. You just said not to tell anybody. So how are they going to desire what we can't tell? Hmm. Oh, I hope you feel the tension. You sense the tension there in the text. You just told us, Jesus, not to tell anybody about who you or what, what, you, what you really are. But then you come down four verses later and say to us, if anyone desires to come after you, how can I come? How can they come after you if they don't know you? Mm. The Bible says in, in Romans that faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of the Lord. And how can they hear unless there be a preacher? And how can they preach unless they've been sent? But Jesus, you just said, don't preach. Don't tell nobody about who I am. And then you say to us, if anyone desires to come after you, how are they going to come after you if we can't talk about you? Hmm. Jesus says, demonstration, I hope you can handle this, trumps conversation all day long. Even demons can communicate who Jesus is. Watch this. But they can't demonstrate who Jesus is. Jesus says, if anyone desires to come after me, I want you to demonstrate what discipleship looks like. Oh, God, this is good. For many of us, we've seen discipleships, uh, a discipleship as these 12 guys who's walking with Jesus with long robes on and sandals. We've seen them at times where they get it right and sometimes they miss it and get it wrong and Jesus correct them. We see these men and gentlemen as those uh, who some call themselves sons of thunder and we see them in ins different instances as they're growing in their relationship with Christ. But discipleship, it's bigger than what we see in the picture. To be the disciple doesn't mean to have a long robe. A disciple is someone who's under tutelage from a master teacher. And Jesus says, you've been walking with me all this time, not just for information. Ooh, I feel this. <laughs> but you've been walking with me all this time for demonstration. He said, I've been showing you how to live this life out, not just telling you, because there's one thing to tell me, but there's another thing to show me. Oh, I feel this. This is good. The Jesus says, I'm not just going to tell you what it means. I'm going to demonstrate it to you. Now, So he says, when it comes to discipleship, because you've been under me and because you've been following me, as Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. As he says to the church at Corinth, he says, because you all been with me, he said, if anyone desires to come after me because you all been with me. I want them to desire to come after me. Watch this. Not just offer conversation. Ooh. <laughs> I want them to come after me based off a demonstration. Out of all of the gospel, discipleship is the most important business of the church. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20. After Jesus has been resurrected, out, right before he's about to be ascended or the ascension, Jesus says to the disciples, all power has been given to me now both in heaven and on earth. Go therefore, listen to the words, and make disciples of all nations. The Great Commission. He is talking to disciples about discipleship. So the greatest mission of the church is to make disciples. He said to make disciples. You don't make disciples by conversation. Ooh. Let me come up for air. No. Disciples are not made by conversation. Disciples are made by demonstration. It's about experience. 
Here we go. Jesus says, I, I want you to demonstrate for those who will desire me that the demonstration of discipleship will make folks desire me. Could it be in the 21st century, while people are not desiring to be disciples, ah, I feel this, uh, it's because our demonstration have been wrong. That God wants people to desire him, uh, hear this, so when men and women see your good works, this demonstration, they will glorify your father who is in heaven. That's 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 demonstration. Maybe our demonstration is out of whack. We have more conversation in the 21st century than we have demonstration. The God is more concerned about demonstration than he is about conversation. Because uh, demonstration means you have to put work in it. And here's the root word to disciple. You got to have discipline. Hmm. To be disciplined um, means you have to be committed. And I want to ask you this evening, how much are you committed to being a disciple? Jesus says in Luke um, first verse 14, chapter, well, yeah, chapter 14, rather, verse 27, he says, And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me, here it is, cannot be my disciple. So the first thing Jesus says to us in conversation, that 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 that, uh, that demonstration is greater than conversation, he says to us, show them, demonstrate to them what denying oneself look like. Maybe many people can't get to Jesus. Whoa, I'm not sure if I'm going to finish this tonight. Huh? It's because too many of us are in the way. What do I mean? People can't see what it means to be a disciple uh, because they're seeing too much of us. Mm. That they're seeing too much of us, our selfishness. You must deny yourself huh? that we've been for ourselves and we've been proclaiming we've been going after god to get for ourselves and jesus said no you got to deny yourself um, you got to practice self-denial and now we struggle with self-denial and here's why we struggle with self-denial denial is not what many people think denial is people have gone through lent and they say, I'm giving up drinks, I'm giving up candy, I'm giving up bread, I'm giving up meat, I'm giving up chocolate. And to them, that's their idea of denying themselves for a few weeks from certain things. I'm not, I'm not getting on social media, I'm not watching TV, I'm not doing... They think those, that is denying what Jesus... That, that's not what Jesus is saying. When Jesus says, deny yourself, are you ready for this? Uh, he means that you are to deny the big I that wants to control your life. He said, when you can deny the big I, the ego, um... Um, your your desire is in the same context. Um, to stay in context, uh, we read a few verses long. Jesus says, "Whoever desires uh, uh, to gain the whole world can lose." He said, "If you can desire your ambitions to gain for yourself, um, that's what self denial is. For God has created us in such a way to know who He is, and for us to be subject to God." And when we're not subject to God, we put ourselves on the throne. Jesus said, you demonstrate discipleship by dethroning yourself. Oh, this is good. That when you can get off the throne, because there can't be two kings on the throne. He said, when you get off the throne of your life and deny yourself, only in then can I sit on the throne and be the head of your life. He says, you got to deny yourself. Because what's behind sin, are you ready for this, is you sitting on the throne. The reason many of us struggle with discipleship, because we're sitting on the throne. And if you get off the throne and allow God to be in charge of your life, we'll deal with it later on the series. Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but it is life I live in the flesh. I now live through faith in Christ. 
So then to follow Jesus means to deny our self-centered lives. It means to devote ourselves to God and not to our own desires. Um, Self-denial is not cheap grace. That I only deny myself when it is convenient. That, that's where many of us find ourselves at now. And so the problem with demonstration is that it's difficult de to demonstrate when you're in the way. Mm. Um, when, when, when you're in the way, we can't see Jesus. Oh, help me tonight. When, when you're in the way, we can't see Jesus. Huh? The only thing we can see is you. And many of us are in the way. And people can't get to Jesus because we are not denying ourselves. Let, let, let me go further because for the sake of time, let me go further. He says, um, we're in Matthew 16. He says uh, to deny himself, look at the language, and take up his cross. Mm. Now, only are many of us confused about what denial is. Many of us are confused what it means to take up the cross. He said, demonstrate this. You got to take up the cross. How you take it up? The problem is this phrase to take up the Anytime someone would bear a cross in this day and age, in the culture in which Jesus is talking about, that person had already signified they were about to die. Mm. And so the cross in Jesus' days was the instrument of death, the instrument of capital punishment. And we need to remember the context of this chapter. Jesus had just told them he was the Messiah. And he was about to be killed by the Jewish religious leaders. He told them he was going to suffer, he was going to be rejected, and he was going to be killed. And he says to the disciples, he's talking to the disciples about discipleship. Just because you call yourself a disciple don't mean you're there yet. He says to them, if you are going to follow me, you must be willing to do the same thing. He says, I'm about to demonstrate to you. I just told you what's about to happen to me, but my conversation um, is not more powerful than my demonstration. He says, I'm about to demonstrate to you what's about to happen. And if I can walk it out, you can be able to walk it out. So he says to them, you got to be willing to do the same thing. And it's in that context. He says, if any man come after me, you must take up your cross. You must be willing to die. Not necessarily physically in most cases, but at a minimal, die to your own popularity. Die to your own plans and ambitions. Die to your own goals uh, for life. Uh, um, he, say, he, he says that um, um, you must be willing to, to take up what I'm about to demonstrate. The reason why the disciples were willing or were able to follow Christ is because Christ modeled for them what it meant to follow him. He says to those who he modeled to, if anyone desires to come out to me, they have to see it through you modeling what it means to follow me. In this day and age, we got so many different factors of fractures. Fractions of Christianity on what it means to be a disciple. And Jesus says um, to be a disciple means to follow Him, um, but following Him is based off demonstration, it's based off crucifying um, yourself, it's based off taking up the cross. Uh, he said they must take up their cross, and I'm about to get out of here, and follow me. I got a question, or I got a statement. If you can't deny yourself, you'll never be able to pick up the cross. And if you can't pick up the cross, you'll never be able to follow him. Let me say it again. You must first deny in order to pick up. Because when you're carrying your own stuff,
Ooh, I feel this. Uh, you don't have enough room to pick up his stuff. His stuff is too big for you to carry it along with your stuff. But what I do know, if you pick up his stuff, who I feel this, uh, he's already carried your stuff on the cross that he can't carry them. That if you pick up his cross, yes, yes, if you pick up the cross, you don't have to worry about the stuff that you let go because everything that was holding you down, Jesus nailed it to the cross. And so when you pick up his cross, you're able to follow him. I got to get out of here. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, in Hebrews chapter 12, um, verse um, 1 and 2. Well, uh, verse yeah, 1 and 2. Uh, uh, well, 2. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, there's joy in this cross, huh? he endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Why do I say that to you? Being a disciple sometimes, carrying the cross sometimes, brings shame. Hmm. Let that sink in for a moment. To not See when you when you when you put the cross down, you pick you back up. And people will say to you, "How dare? Why, how, why didn't you respond to how they hounded you?" The Bible says, "For the joy that was set before him, this joy set before you too, with carrying the cross." For he said, "If we suffer with him, there it is, we will also reign with him." So then, if we're suffering with the cross, we can't put it down because we are identifying with him. It says, consider him who endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be weary and faint in your minds. You, you got to embrace the cross so you can follow after him. And after falling after him, you can become more like him. We become more like Christ by demonstration than we do by conversation. I got to get out of here. We're out of time. I'm going to say it again. We become more like Christ by demonstration than we do by conversation. You can talk a good game, but can you live a good game? Christ is more concerned about how you demonstrate than he is about your conversation. It's one thing to talk about it, but it's another thing to do it. Listen, brothers and sisters, we're out of time, but never out of grace. We're in our new series, Cross Bearers. Tonight we covered demonstration is greater than conversation. We'll be back next week, God's willing, at the same time. I want to pray before we leave, and it's my hope and prayer that the Lord will bless you and keep you. That his face will shine upon you and be gracious unto you. That the Lord will lift his counsel upon you and give you peace. Is my prayer, and remember that I love you to life.